And we're back with The Vacuous Perspective. I'm Val, and I'm joined always by Nate, who G'day. did watch Stars of Mars Episode 1. I haven't yet, but um, I'm working on it, man. Well, I don't, I'm still navigating this. I have to mm. get my VPN back up because I tried signing up for... Went on the, I went on the... Uh, went on the I said, how to watch. He said, it's on Hulu. Great. I like, look up Hulu. Mm. Looked it up. Did all the sign-up stuff, and it, was, it said I had to be in America. And it, it had mm-hmm. this great deal. It said Hulu plus Disney or Hulu, Disney plus, plus ESPN plus twelve ninety five a month. It's a and lot of pluses you're getting for twelve ninety five. Yeah, there's a couple of pluses in there. Yeah. But but also it's a good price. And I was I just thought, well, I already pay for one of those, so why don't I just ditch that and get this nice little bundle? You can't. It's an American thing. They're bundling up over there. We're not bundling uh, up over yeah, here yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take a long time before we get bundled over here. We need to get some more bundleage. Mm, they get all the bundles first. It's not what I wanted to start with about the stars on Mars, but I didn't do my homework, all right? But I did. Uh, well, uh, yeah, what do did some you do? Other homework that I think you'll be impressed by. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, look, I was. Subs- I've only watched the one episode of Stars on Mars, so like, I'm, I'm feeling up. like You're I'm not really doing up. my homework. Right. So. I'd be embarrassing if you had overtaken me. So what, no, what no. have you done? You know how you always go on about how it's really good to have you know, cold a, showers? Hot, a hot shower and then it becomes oh. cold at the mm-hmm. end, mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. a bit of a cool down period before you exit the shower. Explain to the folks at home what the what, where's the mm. thinking here. Go on. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's a tough one actually. I think in essence it is all the little muscles – associated with the capillaries, don't do a lot of work day to day. They're not called on to do anything, to constrict the blood flow, to um, increase the blood flow. Mm. So all those little capillaries, which I believe if you add them all up, you go around the world like twice or something. If you add up your- I hate it when they do those numbers, when they say number. Doesn't it stretch to the moon or something? Isn't no, it that ridiculous? No, it's not that. It's not, I don't know. I don't know. It's oh, not, the let's not, don't bring the, the moon. Don't the bring moon into it. of the yeah. Earth isn't that crazy because that's you know that's a lot of kilometers. We're only talking about two hundred sixty to two hundred eighty thousand kilometers to the moon. Oh yeah, three hundred plus three hundred. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But around yeah. the, okay, it's, so there, there's a lot of infrastructure. Is what I'm saying. Blood. Yeah, there's a lot of blood infrastructure going on, and a lot of it's unutilized because your body never is never stressed in that way. So I think having the cold showers forces those little muscles to engage. It's good for your cardiovascular system, which is the number one cause of death. Mm. Uh, if mm. you look at the World Health Organization statistics. Mm. So anything you can do to improve your cardiovascular system is good in my books. So a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, it used to be an apple, right? But now we've moved on. Now it's cold showers, all right? So write that down. Um, I So I did do this. I did try it. Wow. Not on purpose. <laughs> is, is your hot water pipe burst or something? No, no, no. So I'm in the shower. Um, regular day. Got to get ready. Got to go. Get in the shower. The water's hot. It was lovely. Having a nice hot shower. Just beautiful, right? It's probably like maybe five to eight in the morning, right? And I'm mm-hmm. in the shower and I'm just loving it. It's so warm and nice and I'm just loving it. And then the lights go off in the bathroom and the fan Okay. You know, the exhaust fan, they both go off. And so I knew that the clock was running because I have an electrical water heater as well. So I figured the power's gone out, right? Power's yeah, gone out. Yeah, yeah. I need that, right? But you've still got a, an amount of hot water, right, that you have to yes. work your way through. How long is the hot tank. shower? There's a bit in the tank that's already pre-warmed for, for me, yes, pre-power yes. outage. But Ready I knew mm. that the clock was ticking. Okay. I wasn't going to have night. Uh, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't done my body wash yet. You know, hadn't, hadn't washed my hair. I didn't plan on doing it that day anyway. But I hadn't done that yet. Right. I hadn't done a full lather. I hadn't done a full lather and rinse. Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm. I just thought, well, I got to go now, don't I? This is it. Got to go. Go quick. And within 25 seconds, I want to say. The water is icy cold. What? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a big. It's not a big tank. You would think. Uh, yeah, you, okay. you remember the olden days with the gas, um, 
Oh, I thought you'd have ones. like the rest of the day kind of thing, like, you know, no. 100 liters or something. No, it heats. When you turn on the hot water at your place, it starts cold, doesn't it? Yes. And then it gets warm. And then you turn it off. And if you turn it straight back on again, hey, it's already hot. Right. But if you leave it for any period of time, you have to start back at cold again. So it, okay. that, that water right. in the, in the, in that tank would cool down, go back to room temperature eventually, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, so you cold had a cold shower. shower by I was in a cold shower. I'm in there. I'm, I'm just trying to get it all done. I'm, it's freezing. I'm hating it. But I feel like it did do something positive for me. Oh, good. At least that day. Um, because I thought of, it didn't ruin my day. Let's put it that way. Was it invigorating? Like, mm, no. I wouldn't Would you go say that, that far? No. See, I wouldn't do it again. But if the power turned off, I wouldn't think, oh my God, this is the end of the world, right? So it turns out that um, Western Power had scheduled this outage at 8 o'clock in the morning, right? Mm, to 3 choice. o'clock in the afternoon. It's, a, oh, it's not great. Um, that's when people are getting up. They put their toast in, boom, power's off, right? Mm. Um, but it's okay. I sorted it out. Getting out the garage, that was step two. Uh, Give me 10 good. minutes notice on the, on the text. Don't send me the text after you turn the power off saying, hey, by the way, we told you about this. But we have turned your power off. Thanks. Did Great. you learn? Did you learn about the manual release? Yeah, so I had to do the manual release and lift. Oh, poor you! You had to lift the garage up. Oh no! I know it is a first world oh, problem. No, massive first world problem. But I had to work it out too. And I'm just waking up, cold shower, you know, ready to rock. Um, here we go. Um, get the garage door up. Had to Google the thing. And I should have just read the instructions, but, it, you know, Google it, get it done, lift it up, and then just for the rest of the day just had to live with the anxiety of when the power comes back on, does it, does the garage door return to an open position? Oh, yeah. Okay. Or does it or does it know that it's closed and remain closed? Or when the power comes back on, does it just go, I'll do something? Yeah, okay, okay. Well, you stimulated your system, right? You stressed it I was with ready, some cold yeah, water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was ready to tackle that particular issue straight away. When I got home, press the door, press the press the open button, garage open, nothing. Nothing. Oh. Turns out when I did my manual yeah. release thing, I also took it off the gear. So when it went to do its retract, it just retracted nothing. It didn't pick up the door. No. So there was another 25 minutes I had to sort that out. But all, all in all, great day. Great day. Better day than some. Yeah, you got water. You, you have a manual garage. You've got to be happy with that. You know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, well, couldn't get the car out. I guess I'm not going to work today. But who the fuck wants to stay home with no power? Mm, you have to read a book or something, wouldn't you? Oh, exactly. no. Exactly. See, Jesus. this is another from the big first world problems. <laughs> <laughs> Books on the porch with a coffee sounds like fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if that's the worst thing that happens to you, to you today, I reckon you're going all right. I wasn't even today, and I'm still carrying the trauma, though. Oh, oh okay. But I had the cold shower, not on purpose, but I did it. So I'm taking that off as. Previous homework done. I mean, you know, you know, slightly behind, but I'm getting through it eventually. You know, just got yeah. to wait for circumstance yeah. to sort of take hold. Oh, look! At least you're alive. Pay that. At least you're alive. Um, there was a guy that died last week that I didn't right, mention. No longer alive. <laughs> yeah, right. so he had a worse week than you. Right. This last week. Yeah, it was last week. Well, there was someone this week as well, just, just before I get there. I'm sure I there's people there. every week that die. I'm sure it happens all the time. We, it's just not widely reported. <laughs> there was a writer, a US Pulitzer Prize, Pulitzer? Pulitzer, Pulitzer yeah, yeah. Pulitzer Prize well, that's how they would, winning yeah, that's author. How they would say it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, his name is Cormac McCarthy. Yes, his name sounds familiar. I didn't think the name sounded familiar to me, but he, he wrote a book called The Road. Oh, okay. That got turned into a Viggo Mortensen movie. Yes. 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 And I didn't like it. You didn't like I the book? I don't want to – I didn't. no, I haven't read the book, but I didn't like the movie. Right. It was this post-apocalyptic yes. setting. Yes. 
Yeah, him and his son. There was a few movies like that at the time where it was all about sort of, you know, you had your I Am Legends, you had your that one. There was another one. Um, I, the name eludes me right now, but um, uh, something about Children of Men with Clive Owen where they discover a, a lady who is the first fertile lady in 100 years or something. They have, they've, <laughs> they've got no – there's no – I think that the government or something put in a thing to like make everybody infertile. I, I don't know why that you know that works, but yeah. I can't remember the, the circumstances of Children of Men. But it was this big deal because everyone wanted her dead for some reason. Um, I, I I can't remember jack shit about that movie. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. Yeah, no, no well, I can't, I, I didn't. I don't really know much about uh, the road either. But I was trying to find there was a guy. There was a dude who was a wrestler that died. I forget his name. He had this move called the Camel Clutch. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was this. He was this. Um, he was from the Middle East yeah, in the okay. '80s, in the height of wrestling. Can you find who's that camel clutch? <laughs> Your wrestling fan, the Iron Sheik. Yes, the Iron Sheik. <laughs> Apparently, he was an absolute trailblazer. Yeah, and there's every wrestler's got their shtick. You know what I mean. Yeah, but he was he was from the Middle East in like. I know it's amazing. Yeah, and so he played the heel very well, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, people would have been chanting USA at him and all sorts of fucking. Oh, he shit. would have copped a lot, wouldn't he? Oh my he? God! Oh my God! Because then you got the wrestling fans who know it's kind of all a show, and then you got the, you know, especially if you're talking about the '80s, you've got the the crazy people. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you know, people are just dying left, right, and center. It's it's an absolute epidemic, really. <laughs> yeah, we got to so start as, worrying about it. As we more people become celebrities, mm. more people are on the radar, our radar. See, yes. Cormac McCarthy wasn't really on our radar, other than no. the fact he'd sort of done this movie. So his name wouldn't have stuck out to me. I saw that he'd he'd written the road. Did you just read thought, the obituaries for fun or something? I don't. It just no, it comes up. My phone is advertising these things at me like I care. Oh right, it just so it, it, in front it of you. popped. It popped it up probably like BBC or something. I don't know. That wouldn't be them, but okay. But Cormac ABC McCarthy maybe. surely did other books other than The Road. I mean, he surely got a bit of a repertoire, yeah, of no other books for, that I wouldn't have read. Mm, well, I haven't seen it or read it, but No oh, Country, no for, country old men. for Old Men. Okay, well that's a big win. That's a really good. Is it? That's is, a really is it? good. That's a really good movie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Stephen King called McCormack. <laughs> this is a quote. Maybe the greatest American novelist of my time. Maybe I like that. I like yeah, there's, starting. There's any, a couple. I like yeah, starting <laughs> any big thing with maybe. That's really good. That's really good. Really, yeah. There's a couple really of caveats in there. that. You're just starting. Yeah. You're opening with a maybe, and then you also have that little qualification of my time. Right. So not the greatest. Well, yeah, but to be the greatest of all time, that's that's a big that's a big step. To even yeah. be considered for maybe the best of all time is is huge. I'll take maybe. I'll I'll yeah. take maybe anything. I'll take maybe like all right, maybe an all right bloke. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> it sounds like a pretty Austra- Australian thing almost, but Stephen King is not Australian. Starting with a maybe. But um Oh man, no country for old men won four Oscars. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Including Best Picture, yeah, right. Seems legit. Isn't Daniel Day? Is it, is it a Daniel Day Lewis thing? Is he in that? Did I just? Did I just? Um, because Daniel Day Lewis only comes out of retirement to win Academy Awards. I, I don't think so. Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. A guy called Javier Bardem. Oh yeah, he's amazing. It's not. Yeah, it's and then Josh Brolin. I think is in it as well. Um. Yeah. No. Good stuff. You hey, like the Beatles, um, yeah? Yeah, in the, be- Big yeah, fan the Beatles. Beatles. Oh, you- yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Apparently, AI has enabled a final Beatles song. Yeah, I heard briefly about this. Have you heard the song? Have you listened to it? Uh, no, but is, the, is it even released? Is, and Beatles has it okay been named? Well, Paul McCartney's on board. Yeah, Sir okay, Paul McCartney. Yeah, I would have thought that they'd um, want to lend their – their talents to AI to be able to make Beatles music forever, right? That'd be that'd be nice. <laughs> do you think? Do you think they're they're into that? 
Uh, they I think want he they is. want Beatles songs forever. Yeah, okay. I think he is because yeah. he used apparently he used AI to help create this song. Incredible. So they used they extricated John Lennon's voice from an old demo, so he yep. could complete this song that I think was in its uh, infancy or, right. or just so partly done. Do a, re- a full album of AI songs for the Beatles. Yeah, this is what I found weird because they said that, that this would also, they're talking about this final Beatles song, but they're also talking about the final Beatles record. Mm. And I was like, a record's a bit different to just one song. Agreed. It could be just a song, I guess, or it could be a full album. It depends on, I guess, uh, what he can do with it. But holy moly. And it's expected to be called Now and Then. I don't know who's expecting it, but word on the street is, you heard it first here, all right? Let me let you in on a little secret. It's going to be called That's Now exciting. and Then. As people are putting up YouTube videos for that song title, and I don't think they're the official release. But uh, I would be looking out for the Beatles YouTube channel or something. I think the battle is just starting. Mm, the battle has commenced for, for AI-generated mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. against, I guess, the, the, human, the, the human component. The AI is just going to rip off and augment all this input that we give it. We can give it minimal input. It can do a lot with it. And to the ear, to my little earlobe, it's not really going to care. It's, if it sounds good, it sounds good, right? But Correct. Where, where's the, where's the, uh, the, the human element? <laughs> I thought that was the whole point. Um, well, hey, this, in, in regards to this Beatles thing, it seems like he's saying it's assisted by AI, meaning he's still doing a lot of work on this, I'm guessing. Uh, so it's kind of like augmented. Is different too. Yeah, it's like augmented reality rather than virtual reality. It's kind of like, look, you know, we're sort of doing all the, we're doing the main bits, and then AI is just cherry picking, assisting us with the dead bloke. Yeah, and I came up with a concept not too long ago of co- a website, you know, patent pending, called AI Films, where you type in a synopsis, anything you want, cast anyone you want, right? So you go, I want Robert De Niro to play Hook uh, facing Peter Pan, who's Brendan Fraser, <laughs> and I want I want the story beats to be roughly this, and then it goes and makes the movie for you, and you can watch it tonight. You know De what I mean? De Niro's such a badass. He would be a great Hook. There you go. Well, Dustin Hoffman was a pretty damn good Hook. But, yeah, uh, but I've been watching some De Niro stuff. I just mm. finished Goodfellas. Oh, well, rewatch yeah. that. Fucking hell, that is excellent. It's a good movie. That is, is it that your favorite? Is, such... is it your favorite mob film? Because obviously you got The Godfather. You got The Godfather. You know, three of them. Uh, only two of them are worth. Uh, then you've got a couple of other mob films and Goodfellas. I think I prefer Goodfellas over the Godfather movies, but I haven't really watched them in a long time. Yeah, I think the Godfather one and two are incredible. Yeah, I, I need to give them a bit more time. But this 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 uh this moves. It moves quite quickly because it's going through the different stages of their life. Mm, they do such a good job. Yeah, starts off with the the gangster when he's a, just a little boy mm-hmm. in the yep. hood. Yep, and then ends up trying his life a, just unravels. Yep. Yeah, oh, it gets yeah. In, gets into the drugs, hard into the drugs. I think it unravels for the reasons that it was sort of alluded to in the movie, which is like the um, the bosses say, "You you do this, you do this, you do this," but we do not do we do not do drugs. Mm. And they made a big point out of that, and then it's sort of the the story sort of focuses on how that sort of unraveled his whole life. And it, it's quite an anti drugs film now that I think about it. You're right. He's warned time and time again, don't get on the, the gear, gets on the gear and the whole thing falls apart. Although the, the, main, the main character ends up in witness protection. Mm. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good result for him in some ways, isn't it? Yeah. What did he have to do for that? Turns, oh, like, he had turn evidence. on all his yeah. mates, yeah, yeah. Live, live in constant fear of being found yeah. again by the mob. Yeah, yeah. Which is fascinating, isn't it? Because there's guys now who are ex-mafia and stuff and they're, they're running like podcasts and stuff and talking about X, Y, Z. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, that's is pretty it, cool. yeah, it's, it's interesting that they can do that and monetize, okay, continue to monetize know, be, their no, we'll wrongdoing. Okay, not get murdered as well. Like, mm. that's, that's pretty crazy. But uh, for me, like Donnie Brasco, great mob film, Johnny Depp, Al Pacino. 
Pacino. It's I haven't stuff. seen it. I haven't seen it. Maybe I need to. Oh yeah, if you're yeah. into that sort of stuff, yeah, okay. then that's probably 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 one of my favorites. Yeah, easily. Oh, very good, very good. Easily, but you know, you, you know what you're signing up for. You're signing up for a two and a half hour long movie. That's what you. That's what you're dealing with when you put on Goodfellas, when you put on The Godfather. When yeah, you put but on you're Donnie getting Brasco. actual character development. That's what. Oh, it's it's incredible. They need all the time. Absolutely. And um, there's not too there's not too many moments in that that you. That you 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 left bored. No, no, no. Very well. It's fascinating. Made picture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I grew up playing your Grand Theft Auto games, Grand Theft Auto Three, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which is a sort of mafia sort of thing in the sense that they send him down to Florida to sort of start a new business and by the end of it you're pretty much Scarface. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's sort of how that plays out. So and I would have been playing that, you know, in two thousand and you know, 2000, yeah, around then. Yeah, okay. Great games. Uh, in the news, yeah, we spoke about an incident last week uh, at the NBA finals where Conor McGregor clocked a mascot. But there's been some more stuff Update. from that same game. So he probably mm. thought he needed some good PR, so he thought maybe I'll just go out there and clock a mascot because – um, I need some good PR as well. I'm going to get some bad PR. I need some good PR. So if you haven't heard, um, <clears throat> a, a woman has alleged that Conor McGregor sort of uh, got her sector, sectioned off from her friends by security and then sent into a, a bathroom where he just tried to aggressively kiss her and get her to perform oral sex on him. And she elbowed him and get got out and now she's suing him and the NBA and all sorts of stuff. Is that the story, is it? That's the story that – that's what she has alleged in the thing. She Conor ordered McGregor, to march Conor into McGregor the bathroom. denies all of this. Yeah. Not ordered to march. It was just no. sort of like, a, hey, come here. Um, and so another video has come out, TMZ, mm. of course. They got the scoop on the first one. They got the second one as well. There's videos that have been released. Now, in this video, there's, I don't know, what looks to be a bathroom in the background. Conor McGregor's kind of like sees this girl and goes, oi, come, come, come with me, right? puts his hand out to be like, yeah, let's go, like grab my hand, we'll go, you know, I'll lead you through this crowd of big security blokes and they go behind a door and and with a bunch of other dudes, right, with the security, with more with a detail. Mm. And it just looks weird, right, um, because he's in a re- long-term relationship with his uh, girlfriend, now wife, Dee Devlin, right, they have three kids and she's just announced a fourth is on the way. Fucking right? hell. All right. And he's, you know, allegedly gallivanting around, being a fucking nuisance and d- doing this shit. Loitering now, in bathrooms. If it's all, if it's a thing, he's binned for life, basically. If it's if it's true, he's he's in the bin, basically. Well, is this going to be the straw that broke the camel's back, you think? Well, there's been other sexual assault allegations against him in the Has past there? as well. Yeah, yeah. This is not the first one. Um, so, <clears throat> look. He does love a crime spree, doesn't he? Oh, I don't know. Look, we don't know anything yet. We're still waiting. He's denying all of this, right? Mm. In fact, he was posting, uh, Dee Devlin flew into New York today or yesterday or something. She flew into New York and he did a post on Instagram of just best Father's Day ever. Having the best Father's Day ever right now with my kids and my beautiful um, wife, who's very pregnant, right? Yeah, you know, it was fascinating. It's 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 so fucked up because I don't think I have the right to know anything personal about them, right? About them? No, okay. no. There is an yeah. argument. Hey, you're in the public eye. You make a lot of money. Therefore, you deserve all this scrutiny and stuff, right? If she and him have a thing where, um. They have an agreement where he's allowed to do whatever he wants, basically. If that's what they've agreed to, we don't need, we don't need to be privy to that. No. Right? No. no. Um, and it also requires that this was a consensual exchange that occurred at the NBA, if that's indeed what even happened, right? That's the other important thing, right? Because if, she, if he's allowed to mess around, right, and she was cool with it at the game or whatever was going on, right, then it's all fine. 
Mm. But if 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 he did anything like what she alleges, he's in serious shit. Mm. If she, if she said she wanted tea, yes. and then decided she won't tea anymore. Yes, you, yes, then yes. She doesn't want tea. Well, I think Connor. At the end of the day, Connor, if if he is guilty of these offences, does need to sit down and watch tea consent. Um, mm, yeah. Maybe three or four times. Yeah. Do you think that's an old thing left over? Like in you know, like old Hollywood, your Weinstein stuff. It's a, an implied consent because I'm so rich and powerful. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there might be a bit it's, of that. There might it's, be. It's like, come on. Of course you want to sleep with me. I'm a fucking superstar. Like, why wouldn't you want to do that? You'd be crazy if you didn't want a piece of this. Well, right? he does have an ego the size of Jupiter. <clears throat> yeah. Surely. Yeah, he does. I didn't know who Dee Devlin was. Yeah, she's a saucy pork chop. She's lovely, yeah, but um, it's not really, yeah. Doesn't Neither here nor there, but... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just wondering about his this, this rampage, though, because Connor's gone on rampages before. Yeah, the the, the bus attack was pretty big back in uh, when when Khabib was fighting. Man, does he have, like, CTE or something? Like, what what is wrong with him? If He does seem to do a lot of things that aren't... that are. Not socially acceptable, to um, say the least. I think it's the it, just like the implied T that I was talking about earlier. It's the implied I can do whatever I want because I'm Conor McGregor or I'm rich and famous. Yeah, I can they should do whatever put I him. Want. Yeah, they should put him on stars on Mars. Lock him in with the other contestants. He can treat it like a, a giant a UFC cage, <laughs> hunting down his prey. Insulting them physically, sexually, mentally, any old how. Mm. Yeah, but uh, we don't know what happened yet. We still don't know. Um, we do know what happened to that mascot. He got fucking jacked up. Clocked. But, um, Rocked. I'll be following that story to see what develops because I have a strong opinions on either side. Like if she's lying about something like this, then she needs to go to jail. There's There's two sides to that whole thing. You know what I mean? You can't lie about being um, sexually assaulted. That's not okay. Yeah, it's a big, t- big call, isn't it? Yeah. Even, even the suggestion of it, it has tarnished his reputation immeasurably um, again, right? I just it's, lumped it on the on the pile. You just lump it on the pile? I just Put it at on the, the bottom pile. of the controversies page on the Wikipedia page. Well, uh, I, yeah, I'll just chuck it on there with the rest of them. Like he's done a lot of things. I don't know why this one should be treated as any different. He does he does this kind of stuff all the time. I'm not saying yeah, he should. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that – um, I don't know if it's okay. true or not, but it, this is what I mean. Maybe he's such a big star that he attracts a lot of a, a lot of um, allegations. Yeah, there would be. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, he's described it as a shakedown. That's pretty. He terms. described it as a shakedown. Okay, or maybe his yeah. uh, representatives, yeah. somebody. Yeah, yeah, bold, bold. Well, he's, he's denying it anyway. That's um wanted to get that out there. I think it was interest it was just interesting that after we released that episode and it was just talking about the mascot getting clocked, it would have looked looked a little bit weird that we didn't suggest, um talk about that at least because that yeah, was pretty much the same off. day. But yeah. um we didn't so it, came, about it came out a bit later, did it? Yeah, it came out yeah. the day after um we released, I think. Yeah. So you just didn't know. Um mm. but people are memeing him up now. They're saying he's just a Kardashian now. Like, you know, he's, uh, how so? Well, just living his, you know, living your life out there, um, doing weird shit, um, clicks and all that I sort mean, of shit. I mean, Kardashians you know? aren't committing any crimes, are they? I don't think so. But, you know, they got a sex tape or two. Consensual. Probably, yeah, more than Consensual likely. sex tapes. Yeah, they're yeah. totally fine. Do you reckon a jury would believe if, if someone alleged Kim of proceeding without consent? What do you mean? If she raped someone. If she did. If she sure, did. Sure. I mean, you just said she did, so yeah. Yeah, of yeah. Course. No, so then you got a he said, she said. Uh, yeah, so you well, got the bloke um, saying, you know. I don't know how any I, of that could happens. Her. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know how any of that happens. It'd be complex. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Not something I think about all the time, but um, it's the notion that um, maybe you can offer tea the tea is accepted. And then afterwards you go, I didn't actually want tea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that yeah, it's very tough. And 
I just hope the truth is found out and whoever's the scumbag gets found out to be a scumbag and then scumbag them. Someone's bag a scumbag. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Someone in this situation. Bag them up. The Get rest them. of the scum. Yep. 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 Do you want to hear about some some wild stuff, some Australian uh, rocket or space companies are up to at the moment? Because Australia's got some shit going on. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know we were doing too much. I thought we were in the sort of very early stages of getting our space program back up and up and kicking. Oh, I didn't think we were doing much either. But from a tech point of view, I've just seen a couple of things in in the news that caught my attention. Yeah, what are we building? Well, there's this Australian company called Hypersonics mm. and X. Mm. Um, they just got a patent, a US patent for technology used in its Spartan scramjet design, protecting features of, and I'll give you some commas here just because it starts to get really, it sounds really wild, airframe integrated scramjet with fixed geometry and shape transition for hypersonic operation over a large Mach number range. Mm. The air breathing and self-igniting scramjet engine investment by hypersonic chief technology officer Michael Smart can accelerate between Mach 5 and Mach 12. Yeah, that's pretty quick. How's that guy's name? Michael Smart. It's a good name. Imagine how many blowjobs that guy gets. He's like, man, I'm Michael Smart. I'm got a bloody scramjet that yeah, I think Mac the scramjet's way more impressive than the name, though. I don't think the name's particularly sexy. I don't no, think, but I don't it think just the ladies are going. It. I don't think the ladies are going. You know what I really want? I really want a smart, like the smartest guy. I, I just want to no, do smart guys. If they if they marry him, right, then they become smart. See what I'm saying? Well, yeah. If you can become smart, I guess. Literally, you a smart. literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fueled by hydrogen. Yes. Arranging a longer range flight and enabling the engine to switch on and off several times during the flight because you want that, right? What, you switch it on and off? Yeah, you just flick it on and off just whenever you want it. Whenever you want the engine on during flight, bang it okay. on. Okay. Are these for high altitude or what are these for? Just going really fast, like really, really fast. Apparently, they it's got a non-ballistic trajectory. So with conventional rockets when you're going you know intercontinental you got to the rocket actually goes into space and follows a ballistic trajectory like a, a parabola up and up mm-hmm. and back down a big loop this one just beelines through the atmosphere i was just impressed with the australian company doing something that sounds very very fast yeah well what i mean is mark you said mark 15 right 12 because I need to know what the you know the big guy fires at. I need to know where they're going because they're they're stupid quick. Well, we talk the, like blackbirds and stuff, right? Well, blackbirds, the one that was uh, speculated, uh, yeah, the, the new the, one, the, the the new one in the in the Top Gun movie, yep. in Top Gun in the movie, which is yep. obviously incorrect factually. It goes he goes Mac ten, which is not Mach possible. 10. This is. Mark 5 between – it says it can accelerate between Mach 5 and Mach 12. So I don't really know if acceleration is different from velocity. Like, I mean, they are different, but I would have thought that it's just it can go at a velocity between Mach 5 and Mach 12. I would have thought it would be more accurate, but I'm not Michael Smart. No. That sounds pretty fast. But then there's this other mob. They've got a propulsion system using a solid metallic propellant. I suppose that's a bit like a solid a solid booster, right? They have those solid state boosters. Yep. When you, I saw shoot solid off. metallic propellant, I was like, what the – how do you have a propellant solid? Well, yeah, um, spaceships, rocket boosters, are solid fuel. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know how hey. it works. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know how that works. Is it like TNT that's just a controlled explosion just out the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Essentially, this, they've you got this thing. It's called the. You can't turn those off. So when, once you fire those, there's no throttle to them. They just go at full until they're empty. Yeah. They don't. You can't. You can't control it. So that wouldn't surprise me if it's exactly how you described. 
Um, this scramjet. So, uh, so I'm just looking at a, a website about hypersonic weaponry because hypersonic weapons travel at hypersonic hypersonic speed, mm. defined as between five and twenty five times the speed of sound. Right? Yeah. So they're firing these hypersonic, scramjet yeah, is above powered five. hypersonic cruise missiles, which I think are what you're talking about. Uh, so they don't need to do a ballistics uh, missile trajectory. Mm, mm. Oh, my God. Great. So we're just refining the means to blow each other up. Yeah, and uh, you, can't def- you, can't defend, you can't defend against something that's going hypersonic. That's the idea with these hypersonic missiles, the, that they penetrate your mm-hmm. missile defense systems. I heard that um, after the Star Wars program was announced by, I think, Reagan – where they were going to pop up a satellite around the, you know, to protect against uh, intercontinental missiles. They were going to just shoot them out of the sky, essentially. Yeah. Um, The Russians started working on rockets that move erratically on its ballistic missile trajectory to dodge shit like that. Yeah, okay. So they, you build something that shoots down missiles, they go, cool, we need to make better missiles. It's this constant feeding um, of innovation on both sides because both are really ha- grappling to figure out how to defend and attack each other. It's, great, yeah, it's, a, it's an it? arms race. It's great, isn't it? But hypersonic weapons are the new nuclear bombs. Mm. So it says here, i got this article, the Spartan differs from traditional scramjets. I don't know what a scramjet is, hey. Um, I think it's a type of jet. It's surely it's got no one in it. New, no. new. No. They wouldn't go so well because this <laughs> one's fueled by environmentally friendly hydrogen. Isn't that just great? Yeah, kill people but that. don't hurt the environment. Yeah, blow stuff up. What did just... the environment ever do to you? Keep the environment out of it. Right. It also we're crucially using, allows it is the environment. It is the environment. <laughs> So we're doing it again. We're using the environment to blow up the environment. <laughs> yeah, so hypersonic tech is defined at flying at least Mach 5, which we said, and it says currently, currently, countries are currently in an arms race to develop the next generation of missiles that are so maneuverable in midair they can't be intercepted or detected. Hmm. Yeah, so Australia are working on these other miss the same thing, the missiles. Um, as of 2021, the missile is expected to enter service within five to ten years. The Australian government considers the missile to be a potential deterrent to would-be aggressors in the Pacific region. So the idea is you build up these these capabilities, they'll say they'd call them, like your submarines and your and all that sort of stuff. And then you'd be able to launch these supersonic weapons from the cruise missile, yeah. So, so supersonic cruise missiles from conventional, already used aircraft that we use. So good. Again, we're doing it. We're uh, yeah, weapons getting armed to the tooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of dollary dues in that. Oh yeah, you know, in death and destruction. It's a bit. You know, you shouldn't be able to profit off war, I don't think. I think that should be illegal. Have you developed any weapons of late? No, but I haven't. Yeah, so no. So you can tell why I'm not on the side of let's keep, let's go, you know, let's do it. Um, what is that? What's that sound in your in your ear? It's, a, it's like a laser beam. Does that sound like a laser beam? It's a, it's a little bird whistle. I got from SciTech. Oh, excellent. You put a little bit of water in it. I know these whistles. Yeah, water whistles. Yeah, you know the one. Wait, is that the one? It's not the one, actually. It's not the one that uh, <laughs> we got in Melbourne. I got a fresh one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You got to keep them fresh. Did you, did you go to SciTech? Yeah. When Was we it have, that um, thing? A friend's two and a half year old. Oh, excellent. No, no, it wasn't for the Pink Floyd thing. No, no. it was just it was unrelated. Yeah, no, you just went there. Do they still have, <clears throat> do they still have all the old stuff there? No, they do not. What are you talking about? So they do not. W- they have nothing through, that I remember. Yeah, you don't remember a thing. All I remember actually is there was this big face with a tongue sticking out, and yep. I have 
Yeah, <laughs> this is the memory that every kid has who went to SciTech in the nineties. This is the memory that every kid has if you went to SciTech. You put you the know, big strawberry in the yep. in the hole that fits the strawberry, and it goes, mmm, sweet. Mm, you put the indeed. lemon in the hole that has the lemon. Mmm, sour. sour. Yep. And it was kind of freaky, wasn't it? It was a little bit freaky, the whole the whole thing. Yeah, but I liked it. I don't know why. There'll be a big ball that you can touch that makes the electricity come to your fingers, like oh, one yeah, of those yeah. magic balls you had as a kid. That there, you, was one, there was one of those. There you go. <laughs> a few other things, a little earthquake table, you build a tiny, a tiny little house. And there's a countdown timer before the earthquake oh. goes off and everything shakes and the, the idea is to build a, a house, some infrastructure that survives. Okay, so you took the two-and-a-half-year-old with um, with your friend um, and, and did they get it much out of it? Uh, not really. Do you I think went... we're looking at a potential Elon Musk sort of um, – or not Elon Musk but maybe like an Albert Einstein uh, kind of scenario here? No, she was pretty useless to tell you the oh, truth. Oh, no. Didn't, didn't really – yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always had to pretty much hold house her hand through the whole thing. Yeah, How, like the house that she built for the earthquake was rubbish. She kept doing saying? things, and I'd want to do things, and then to make it like work, and then she would just want to fucking have her way with with it, any old how, right? Right. You know, I'd be like, get get off there. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> she just so you try and do something, and then you know, it, it, it's her way. Right. And on. It, in a lot of ways, it is more fun. It's just less productive. Right. <laughs> I I have been born and bred to be a productive citizen. Right. So once you get to SciTech, you're like, right, put my lab coat on. Right. What are we doing first? All right. I'm I'm put reading work, the information. Boss. I'm I'm trying to understand what they what they're trying to convey to me. All right. So you learned what bunch scientific of stuff then. principle. Oh, look, we gave up. There, there's actually a space. <laughs> there's a space exhibit on at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it didn't do so well in. In that, but yeah, I read. I read a little bit. I was distracted. I was this two and a half year olds like up on things, you know, yep. dive bombing off. Yeah, whatever yep. she can. Yep. Being yeah. it, being it, bloody nuisance. <laughs> it was, she was quite distracting, actually. Now, but so I, I thought it was f- good. But yeah, of course, the last time I went was twenty plus years ago. So I'm going to have a different view of it. I'm a, I'm a different person now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is aimed at children, right? Yeah, it would have been weird if you went, man. We got to go to SciTech every week from now on because it was so good. It's actually better than when I was a kid. It's actually way better now. Now that I'm an adult, oh my god, I would have been shocked if you came in with that, <laughs> bro. You got to come to SciTech with me. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow? We have to go. You have to go. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh... Uh, yeah, what have what have you been? So I went to SciTech. Have you have you solved no, I didn't, any I didn't go to SciTech. scientific formulated any scientific principles? No, but I did hear that we've got a new potential quasi moon surrounding us. Another a, moon, a quasi a quasi moon, a quasi. They want to name this. They want to they want to give this thing a bit of a you know. Bring it into the fam officially. Well, Earth as a has quasi one. Moon. Yeah, Earth, Earth, has one? Earth, 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 wow. Earth. If you're just catching up, yeah. Quasi Got another moon. one. Quasi moon. What what kind of moon are we talking about? Is it like a- we're talking about a twenty meter long asteroid? Is it caught in our orbital trajectory? It's been caught in our orbit for the last, I think. 5,000 years. Ooh, which is that's got to qualify? Does, it, does that not, not have to qualify? Man, these Saturn moons qualified after two, two three years. Well, this thing, we, we trapped it in our orbit about 2,000 to 5,000 years ago. I think it's one of those numbers. It doesn't matter. It's a blink of the eye in, uh, in astronomical terms, in terms of the age of our solar system and our planet. 2,000 years is nothing, is nothing. So yeah, two thousand. We know the moon ago, yeah. is roughly our moon, big boy, is currently around between three hundred sixty thousand and three hundred eighty thousand kilometers away, right? This thing has an orbit of around a million, so it's ages away. 
It's oh, so it's where it's where the James away. the James Webb Space Telescope. It's where is. the James Webb. Yeah. It's it's roughly where the James Webb Space Telescope is chilling out, and it's well, and it's been orbiting us for mm. around that time, and it will continue to do that for another couple of thousand years before it we lose it. I tell you what, though, they could get a better name for it. Have you seen what it's called? Yeah, I did hear the name today, but tell me, tell the folks here, what's the name? Twenty twenty three FW thirteen. Yeah, FW thirteen. So you found it, yeah. So what info have you got? Was I was I was I did I have any of that with the the mm, distance? Sounds about right. The object travels mm. around the sun at the same rate as the Earth while also mm-hmm. circling our planet. Mm. Unlike a true moon, quasi satellites are caught in a synchronized orbit around a planet, but it doesn't orbit the planet in a simple closed path. Its orbit is complex and loops around the planet, but also moves away from it. Yeah. So we're going to lose it. Oh, we're going to lose it. We'll stick around for a hundred more years before shooting off to space. Hundred? Is that all? I thought it was a couple of thousand. Hundreds more. Sorry, hundreds oh, more. Hundreds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And then it's going to zip off, and then it's going to start orbiting the sun again. So, good luck to it. Was what I'll say. Good luck. Well, we got to give a better name before it heads off. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's part of an a, the a, a cluster of asteroids. I thought called the Apollo cluster. So that's pretty moony already. I had no idea. You don't have to do much to that. Yeah. Yeah, there's always new findings, isn't there? Right, just yeah. when you think you figured it out. I know. It's mm. getting scarier by the day. Uh, we, we know we've spoken about Enceladus before, uh, a mm. moon of Saturn. Mm. Uh, they have just confirmed that phosphorus has been found in large quantities on that moon. And that is the rarest of the six building blocks for life as we know it. Right. Phosphorus is one of the big six. It's one of the big six and it's the most unlikely of the big six. So the others others were confirmed and there were a lot of theories going around about whether it would or would not have phosphorus in its environment. There's been hot debate and apparently it's been 100% confirmed by NASA's Cassini spacecraft. Excellent. Has been picking up bits of water fragments that have been ejected from the yes. moon. And uh, they say it's a very good and important ability, hab a bit, hab its ability indicator, habitability. Mm. Habitability indicator. Habitability. It's a good word. Right. It is a good word. So the penguins, is that what you're talking about then? The penguins. We penguins. are on. Yeah, well, it wouldn't shock me. Not anymore. <laughs> so they say it's habitable. Yep. It's clearly hard to argue against that. But right on. we do not know if it is inhabited. Yes, yes. Clearly. Um, so what? <clears throat> when you say habitable, are you talking like... And is it okay otherwise? For life as we know it, yes. What do you mean? Has it got a breathable atmosphere? No, it has all the building blocks. Like it's got all the building blocks. It's got, so you're the, saying, it's got oxygen. So you're saying in the earth, in the, in the in the core of the thing, we could have some vents going. Is that what you're talking about? We could have vents. We could Things have some, aren't, some, so some thermo vent creatures is what you're yes, talking yes, about. Yes, as, yes, as yes. A, if it's habitable, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm. phosphorus is incredibly important for DNA chains. That's why it's one of the six ingredients, the building blocks that you need. Weird. So if a lot of the biological molecules we need have phosphorus in them. Right. And they have actually found that the concentrations of phosphorus are 500 times higher mm. than the highest known concentrations in Earth's oceans. So it's, it's too much is what it's you're saying. It's got plenty. It's too got much. plenty. Of, I don't much. know if you can have too much. You can have know. too much. You definitely can because the operative word is too much. So that you you absolutely can have too much if someone says it's too much. You're saying it's too much. I don't yes, think it yes, is yes, too yes, much yes, for yes. life. I'm popping my science cap on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so that's that's pretty exciting. And the reason for that is they reckon that it's got a thing called a soda ocean, which they think is really common in these these wet planets that we have out there with plenty mm. of water on them. 
they've got lots of carbonates in their mm. Mm. on the, in their liquid, and those carbonates are, uh, I guess, minerals that contain carbon dioxide and bond things that normally bond to phosphorus. So, like calcium's floating around, and this carbonate goes, "I'll have that." And that calcium now can't bond to the bond to the phosphorus, so it's free to be used in chemical reactions rather than there being a small amount of phosphorus and it all getting n- nibbled up and 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 uh, accounted for, like you know, getting married to a calcium atom, right? And they live happily ever after. But now that phosphorus is taken out of out of the population, can't be used for a DNA chain. Right, but we got plenty of it. They got plenty of it, and they've got all the all the other minerals uh, occupied with the, the carbonates in the soda you, ocean. You keep saying carbonates and soda water and stuff, and I'm just imagining just cracking open this planet and having a bit of a sip because it sounds delightful. It sounds delicious, doesn't it? It sounds like um, it doesn't sound quite sound like a hard earned thirst needing a big cold beer, but it does sound like um, low on fizz, so you can slam it down fast. It would definitely fizz. Classic yeah, yeah. solo if you, ad. You know how we have bottles of water from various springs and, and river systems and they advertise them as being very fancy mineral waters? Yes. Can you imagine bottling this stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'd be quite expensive, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, but yeah, we have people with money they don't know what to do with. Oh, clearly. We, we have people, yeah, art. Think about art and how much they spend on some artworks. Yeah, yeah but we're, art we're has talking value. about some water from. Yeah, but you have to charge them for the, the pickup delivery fees. Where there they get you. It's three bucks for the water from Celadus. It's three bucks, right? But the delivery fee is twelve billion. Yeah, someone out there wants a, a fancy water. I mean, some, it's, some it's a soda. Too many it's billions. A, some people want a water from a soda ocean. All right, let's sue them. Conor yeah, McGregor no, would fair. have one. He'd be like, yeah, yeah no, yeah. for sure, for sure. Spray it up. And if you really, if you, if you really like your Enceladus water, then you, you go, right? You go you and go live there. on Jupiter, yeah. Oh, man, that sounds like a long way. It is a long way. You've seen 2001 Space Odyssey, right? Yeah, but I've also seen that other thing that's gone on Jupiter and it's fucking taken like 10 years to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because in 2001, they go to Jupiter. That's where the the, the yeah, big moon rise happens or the Jupiter rising. Um, yeah. And then it, big lineups. The massive trip scene. Yeah. It's, great. it's like the astronauts done about five tabs of LSD. Yeah. I, I don't think I've really watched that with the original soundtrack yet. I've only watched it with um with the Floyd. Oh, really? That's mm. That would be perfect. Probably better with the Floyd. I don't know. if Yeah. You must have seen it before. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, it's incredible. It's got a great soundtrack, 2001. It does. The All the classical music, mm. which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's generally, but the way it's used, it's just so, they're so, they're, some of the scenes are so iconic. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Great special effects for something done in 68. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, isn't it? Fantastic. But, he, you know, <clears throat> that's what happens when you help fake moon, the moon landings, you know. You get all this cool shit. You make great movies. Um, Kubrick. R.I.P. What's what's the deal with the cosmic egg? You know, the astronaut, at the end you may remember there's this there's these yeah, scenes this big where. Egg inside space with a baby in it. Yeah, but to, before that, the, he, the astronaut goes mm. through. Mm the like fucking wormhole or whatever. He has his big trip, right? 20 yep. minutes of colours and flashing lights. And then he ends up in this neoclassical bedroom. Yes, a crazy scene. And I think he's meant to live out the rest of his days. Yeah, but every time he looks across the room, he sees mm. an older version of himself mm. and the younger version of himself will then disappear and then mm. – the older version will see another older version of himself. Yes. And eventually he's just laying in the bed. Mm. He's this old man laying in the bed, um, completely useless. Yes. And he's looking at the 
obelisk thing. Obelisk thing. That's right. Mm. That weird the, black thing. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, mm. his well, I don't know if it's him or not, but there's this big cosmic egg circling cir- in orbit around the planet, mm. circling the planet. What is is it him or is it what's that saying? I have no idea is the short answer to that. It probably would have been analysed to death by shitloads of people. Um, sure, it could be him. It could be him. Yeah, it's... Because the whole, the whole concept of that obelisk thing or whatever whatever it's called is that it sort of sparks human um, development, right? Yes. And it might be doing that multiple times. And if he, he's still got it kicking around with him in his hotel room or whatever the, wherever the hell he is at the end game, <laughs> he's still got it. So there's something going on there for sure. Because there's only really a couple of main scenes in that movie. You've got, yeah, the, the, the apes at the beginning who seem to be worried about this other tribe of apes. And as you say, they, they come across this obelisk or one day they just wake up and the obelisk is there. I'm not really mm. sure what happens. And... They have this breakthrough moment of using mm. a bone as a weapon, like a big femur of a dead animal. Yeah, and the, they go and club them. They go club the other tribe, club them away. Mm. Oh, yes, I do. That, I would love to talk to Kubrick. I'd love to. I'd love he's to. Dead. I know. I, that's why I'd love to talk to him if I could. But no, nah, he's too uh, dead. He's so dead. A little dead. bit too dead. How did he die again? Um, I don't know how he died, but I know when he died. He died like uh, 90s? Just before, just before Eyes Wide Shut came out. Yeah, that was early 90s, wasn't it? Maybe mid-90s? Mm, late 90s, yeah. Late 90s? Yeah. 99. Ninety nine. okay. Yeah, because... I, I can't recall if he died in unusual circumstances, but I mean, I think well, it was I'm just pretty a- sure there's a story that goes that um, he was still the the movie was being like uh, approved by the studio, yeah, and he died in between it. Like he had, they cut bits from the movie, they cut bits from Eyes Wide Shut and released it. Mm, okay, that's the story. I'd love to see the movie as he made it. Can you get that? No. Uncut. No, you, you cannot. cannot. No, you cannot. Okay, I'll read this off his Wikipedia. On March 7th, 1999, six days, are, six days after screening a final cut of Eyes Wide Shut for his family and stars, Kubrick died in his sleep at the age of 70, suffering a heart attack. His funeral was held five days later with only close friends and family in attendance, totaling about 100 people. The media were kept a mile away outside the entrance gate. Uh, someone who attended the funeral described it as a family farewell, almost like an English picnic with cellists, clarinets, clarinetists, Jesus, and singers providing song and music from many of his favorite classical compositions. Blah, 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 blah. Um, he was buried next to his favorite tree on the estate. In a book dedicated to Kubrick, his wife, Christiane, included one of his favorite quotations of Oscar Wilde. The tragedy of old age is not that one is old, but that one is young. I don't know what that means. I was about to say, that I don't know what that means. The tragedy of old age is not that one is old, but that one is young. I don't know what that means, but good on you, Kirby. Uh, no, no mention there of a final cut of Eyes Wide Shut or anything in there, so could be bullshit, could yeah. be, or it could be just... Um, Forbidden information. <sighs> Trying to find what that quote means. I want someone to explain it to well, me. Well, it's an Oscar Wilde quote, yeah. so he was pretty. He was pretty famous for quotes, wasn't he? He was a bit of a quote guy. Sure was. So I'll, I'll think about that over the course of the week and come back to you. Yeah, um, aliens. Is there more alien news? Um, look, I'm back Have they in found the, the aliens? I'm just back in, aren't I? Like, yeah. really, I'm just back in because the YouTube algorithm has decided that uh, I'm back into it. So it's, it's um, suggesting all this stuff for me. I've um, been resisting it. The, it's tried. It's doing its best. I've seen a couple of 
Uh, I've seen a couple of UFO type images in there, and I just haven't. The videos what can are too you make of the me. images? Surely not a lot, yeah. but if you have someone explaining stuff, that that helps, um, yeah. like the Fravor stuff. Um, I saw Michu Kaku, who I know you're a big fan of, talking to Joe Rogan about UAPs. Yeah, and he was um, a lot more open than DeGrasse on the whole thing. From what we were talking about the other week, where DeGrasse kind of laughed off some UAP stuff. Kaku yeah, is kind yeah. of all in, in, in a sense, in going, no, 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 people are saying they're seeing this stuff. And look, um, we don't have stuff that does that. So He was far sure. more open-minded, yeah. Yeah, very open-minded about it. Um, He's all about future technologies as well, though. True. Loves loves the future technology, has books on them, books on possible technologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, somewhere deep in that book would be something uh, akin to hey, what happens if a television crash lands in the backyard and we figure out how to rebuild it? Do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. le- there's, a, there's a level of technological advancement that you can get. Um, you can leap in technological advancement if you're assisted by either a crashed spaceship or a, or a crashed alien who te- talks to you or like the example of, which is the example that they give is the television falling to the ground. Uh, if you had all that, how would you even think about rebuilding the television? Or you don't know what the background infrastructure is, like the tele, like the uh, communications sort of rigs that you would need to push the signal out to the TV. You can build a TV, but if it's not receiving any signals, well then, it's useless, right? Mm-hmm. So the same thing being applied to um, backwards engineering of you of alien tech or extraterrestrial or fucking other world or whatever they want to call it these days. Um, is quite difficult, you would imagine. Mm, mm. But he he was sort of just going, look, we don't know. Is it the is it the Russians? Is this Chinese tech? Is this something else? Um, he, no one's aware of anything capable of doing any of that shit. So it's quite fascinating. It is, and this is coming from a guy that built a particle accelerator in his basement. Joyses. When he was 17. What a psychopath. So he, he photographed mm. antimatter. Mm. And the reason, so he, he somehow in his particle accelerator that he created before the internet. Yeah. Okay. He, he created antimatter and the reason he knows is in the magnetic field. Mm-hmm. The particle moved the opposite direction to mm-hmm. what a normal charged particle, so matter being just a, a hydrogen atom of positive charge, would move a certain direction in a magnetic field. He photographed this thing moving the other way, confirming its existence as antimatter, which only exists for a brief moment in time. Mm. What does that mean? But what. What level is that man operating on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you doing when you were 17? Uh, I would have dabbled in particle acceleration a little <laughs> bit, a little bit, a little bit. But just no antimatter. You were just I kind of dealing with regular matter. matter. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. get any of that. I just had the regular matter. Yeah. Now, look, to be honest, I wasn't doing anything too productive. Um, I don't think I was doing anything on that level. <laughs> Oh, man, that is so wild. So, yeah, that is pretty nuts. Hey, you know I'm going to Egypt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's coming up. It's not that far away now, actually. It's um, oh, less, it's, it's nearly it's two months and a week. So I'm trying to get in the mood. And yeah. I think there's going to be Egyptian segment every bloody week until I go, to be honest, because that's sort of what I'm reading about, what I'm into. Oh, yeah, and it's going to be what you talk about when you come back too because I'm going to have questions. So you're going to have to come to the table with all those answers. I know you know a lot about – a lot, sorry, I should say. I know you know at least a little bit, probably similar to what I know about. Um, what happens when you die in Egyptian culture? right. What happens? Depends. Are you a pharaoh or are you the common person? Does it matter? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they I mean, do different rights. I mean, the common people yeah. didn't have their fucking hearts ripped out and all that sort of shit. Um, they didn't get that treatment. It was. It's not a normal funerary procession. This is for the pharaoh. Yeah, well, I thought even common people started they to even did. get mummified. If you have enough cash, remember, you got to remember, if there's enough cash, you can do whatever you want. True. Um, okay. No, anyway, anyway, let's say let's say they did. Let's say they all did. And, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. There's yeah, this, what happens? I'm, I'm reading yeah, the, I know what happens. Yeah, I'm reading the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Great. And it's a translation of funerary yes. texts. Yes. That's exciting. And it's actually... It's fantastic. It's a, a celebration of life, really. I think the the name's a bit of a misnomer. Yeah, and the fact that it was in the nineteen ninety seven or whatever movie, The Mummy, with Brendan Fraser as was being it? the book that summons Inhotep back up from his sleep. You know, the, it was the Book of the Dead. Yeah, oh, the, the okay. OG Book of the Dead, though, not the bloody bloody English transcribed version. We're talking about the real thing. Yeah. Okay. What? what and the Book Brendan of the Fraser. Dead has popped up in shit loads of movies and stuff as a way to raise the dead and all that sort of shit. But really, it's it's about funerary practices, right? Pretty much. So this one, there's most of it is because tra- there's no one authoritative copy of the Book of the Dead. It's not like the the King James version of the Bible where we've just sort of landed on one and that's the be all and end all. This is. Um, largely taken from a a, a a a scroll they have in the I think it's currently one of the English museums that is one person's book of the dead which was assigned to him. You can buy them and put your name on them and oh, right. and yeah. customize the, the spells and all that stuff that yeah. you think you need in the afterlife. Right, right. Custom spells. Should be noted though that the King James, King James Bible isn't the only Bible out there. There's hundreds and thousands yeah, of no, Bibles. Yeah, no, there certainly is. But, um, it, you know, you've, the, 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 at least we have one, I'm going to use it, in inverted commas, authoritative version. You have well, We don't the, really. We have Jerry's. We have Jerry's Book of the Dead. We've only got Jerry's. Yeah, that's what we've got. Yeah, and so what they do. Yeah, in this case, we've only got one version. So there's yes, and but they that lot. There's lots of similarities between the funerary practices, and so all I'm saying is that this is an English translation of. It has at the beginning. It sort of says what chapters are from what texts, and this is this is like extracts, and they've mm-hmm. put it together to be like this is a really good um, understanding of what we have of a common book of the dead. Got it. Okay, great. Without being of any, like, no one ever had this particular book, you know, no, translated this in this way. This is a compilation. Again. This is a compilation. Yes. But Much anyway, like the Bible is a compilation. Yes, yes. Um, but then someone at least got together at one point and said, this is the one that we're all going with. Um, mm. and, and a yeah, lot of people still, swallowed that. Mm, no, it's still written, like, some in some parts of the Bible, you can have literally a line written by one author and the next line written by a different author. Oh, yeah, but then we all landed on one. All I'm saying is I have the 1600 version of the King sure. James version of the Bible, and that's the, that's the main one now. Right. That's been, that's main been one. and, you know, if you're taking the, in terms of sales, you can believe sure. whatever you want, but that's, that's, that's the one. That's the is one it? that's had the, the millions of, millions upon millions of sales is is that All right, the KGB right yeah. okay <laughs> KGB yeah the KJB yeah this one I have or this I think it's called the Annie one A N I I don't know how to pronounce it Arnie it's a seventy eight foot papyrus scroll that is designed to get you to immortality great and originally it was just for pharaohs but they've started to later on they started to monetize this a bit more and give it to what I'll call civilians. Mm. Excellent. Um, what have I? I'm only a third of the way through it. But the idea is if you follow the directions in the scroll and get past all the, the monsters and pitfalls, you find your way to the final challenge, the whole of judgment. Right, where you we're face. There. We're there. We're there now. I think it's also called the the whole of Mart, M-A-A-T. Right, and this is where we're going to get our heart weighed against the feather and all that sort of cool stuff. Is that right? That's right. And so what else do you know about that? Or what? what so we're in the whole of Mart. What do you think? Well, I, presumably I have my organs with me. I brought them with me in my little jars. I'll pop them on the side there, make sure that they're 
because they, they'll, they'll want to check off your organs when you get there, you know? They'll want to make sure that you've popped your organs in the right jazz. They're very picky about that. Heart comes out, weigh it against a feather. If you lived a good life, scales balance. Um, you get a little nod from Newbie, I guess, Anubis. I don't know if he's there. Give him a little nod, give him a pat on the head, and then you're in. I don't know. Yeah. That's the short yeah, answer. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty close. So you have to face 42 separate gods. There's 42 of them. There's that's 42 a good number. of them. Great mm. number, right? Mm. We okay, went into cool. 40. You need to watch our episode 42 for a full background to uh, that number. Magic number. But it's fascinating that it's as old as Egypt, this 42 thing. That's, that's what I that's thought. Fascinating. I saw that and it jumped out. I was like, holy shit, 42 separate gods in front of 42 separate doors. Right. So they got doors as well. Mm-hmm. And you have Blood to deny deal. having committed particular sins to each one. All right. So you walk up to the first one and it goes, did you do this? I did not eat McDonald's on a Friday. So it says deny. That means even if it's true, deny? Yes. So you I- try and get away with it. When you're there in the moment and you did eat McDonald's, you're, you're meant to try and get away with it. They all were trying to bullshit the gods. Right. Right. They're trying to bullshit the gods. So they're called negative confessions. Or declarations right. of innocence. Right. So the, the, presumably you open the door and it says, you are guilty of this. And you go, no, I'm not. <laughs> and they go, cool, go to the next door. Is that, yeah. is that what I'm, yeah, is that what yeah, I'm getting? D- definitely, okay. 100%. You just keep, just, just, yeah, and keep telling you them. You have no. this thing called a, a heart scarab amulet that you're buried mm. with that sits over your heart when you're mummified. And it's engraved with the words, do not stand as a witness against me. And the idea is it so your heart doesn't betray you because that's well, the note. So you got to get the heart to lie for you as well. you got to get the heart on board because if the heart Fuck rats you dead. out. Right, you're fucked. You may as well be yeah. in the good fellas at that point. Wouldn't this weigh heavy on your heart, this lying to 42 gods or whatever, lying to them or being, you know, it, denying It's like anything? beating a lie detector. Mm. If you believe it happened. Right. I don't think that's how lie detectors work. <laughs> And then it all comes down. Lie detectors go straight through the bullshit. They're better than these gods by the sound of things. They're just trusting them. No, I didn't. Radio, don't worry about it. You seem pretty trustworthy to me. So, yeah. I reckon they should do that. They should do that. And then the 42nd door should be, the accusation should be, you lied to 41 of the previous gods. And that's when you're meant to come clean and go, yes, I did. It's my only sin is all the lies I just told. That's it. Other than that, <laughs> clean slate. <laughs> Congratulations, you win. Enjoy then, immortality. <laughs> <laughs> immortality, I'll get to that. It doesn't sound so good though. So you have no. this decisive moment which, which you're aware of, aware of, which is really the culmination of what's going on, is the weighing of the heart in front of Anubis. Against the feather, right. Against so he's the there. pure ostrich feather. Okay, great. I think he plucks out of a god or something. It's related to a god. But anyway, the ostrich feather goes on. And the heart can't be heavier or lighter. It's also bad if it's lighter. Don't know I why. I didn't know that. I don't know if you I didn't know you could. It has to be exactly the precisely the ostrich feather. Okay. And it is? I'm guessing. Well, if it is, then yep. Ra picks you up. Ra comes. The god Ra yep, picks you up on the chariot or whatever, swings you by to the Lord of the Underworld, Osiris. Oh, good. I'm going to go visit, visit the Lord of the Underworld. The Lord of the Underworld. And he is also the god of fertility and rebirth. Great. A good guy to talk to at this time of death. He has a lot of strings to his bow, yes. Yeah. And he will good give guy. you final approval to send you to the afterlife. Bloody hell, this is a bit of a process. <laughs> but yep. afterlife doesn't sound so good. I mean, you know, in... Uh, you get all your it? stuff, though. You get all, you get to bring all your stuff. That's why you, they bury it all with you. Well, you get, so you a get plot to of, take your little fucking thing, and well, they you, give do, you, a plot you do get heaven. some stuff. They give you a plot of land, which do you're they? supposed to work. Oh shit! I got to toil the field. Your parents are there. You have this plot of land, and you have to tend oh. this crop for all eternity. Oh shit! So, I mean, I'm not really sure. When I found out that you that just, sounds like servitude. It does. I was it like, sounds like you, entering a more, you know perpetual servitude. I was like, guys, did you get to the end of the book? Right, right. You know, you're going to be up there fucking you know, scything hay and shit forever. You know that, right? (laughs) 
Okay. So what? You don't want the afterlife then? If it's just if it's just mowing the lawn, you don't want to do it? Well, it's better than what happens if your heart weighs more or less than the feather. And that's in this book, is it? Yeah, I haven't got to it. But why would uh, that be in the book? If this is all about this person's funeral like I picture this Book of the Deads now as like a like a funeral booklet. You know how if you go to a funeral they give you the booklet, it's got the person's face on it, it goes a bit about their life and whatnot and for some pictures and stuff i thought it's like that where they're doing hey this is my funeral and this is how i'm going to go into the afterlife you wouldn't go oh by the way if my heart doesn't weigh enough or too much here we fucking go and then it's like um bad times going to happen what happens oh yeah your soul's fed to Ahmet, the devourer of souls great Ahmet's going to fucking devour your soul great heart crocodile right yeah you should watch moon Knight. i think you'd enjoy it yeah what's that it's a Marvel Maku Cinematic Universe TV series mm. with a bit of an Egyptian flavor to it. So you might want to you might want to get on that. Just bit, just, bit just as a bit of a okay. Just as a bit of a um, you know, something to watch before going ahead. Yeah, like an appetizer. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, this one of my accommodation sent me some recommendations for Egyptian fiction. It's a oh, fiction good. set in Egypt, and I was like, oh, I, I kind of want the real. I'm going to Egypt to look at all the historical. Yeah, you don't want to muddy the waters. Muddy the waters with fiction. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> anyway, I've got reading, enough. You are reading from the Book of the Dead, so yeah. But I mean, this is this is culturally significant. This is what the, the pyramid text. This is what's like. Also, the hieroglyphs are depicting. Like part of this is um, the funerary texts include a lot of different things. One of them being the pyramid texts, which were mm-hmm. directed at the pharaohs, but mm-hmm. have similar stories. Mm. The coffin texts um, and these these scrolls that they find um, around the place. But what I found interesting Bloody is hell. a lot of it, these negative confessions yes. are just the Ten Commandments. All, yeah, they're right. all there. All the Ten Commandments are there except for the one God one. Right. Yeah, because they obviously aren't um, monotheistic. No. That was like a later development. Yes, the Abrahamic religions are the first sort of monotheistic religions in the world, I thought. And I'm starting to see more of a link between Egyptian culture and the Bible, like the whole... Of course. Like, There'd like, be crossover, wouldn't there? Jesus shares Osiris's birthday mm. in that he is the god of rebirth mm. and fertility and his mm. birthday, and I don't even know this, but I know that he's... He, he's, it will be, I guarantee you, Osiris' birthday will be the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, which will be like the 23rd of December. Sure, sure. Because it's, and, when, and it's, when, the, it's things, when the day is the shortest and then it's the turning point where the day starts to all elongate. All of our holidays are built around the solstices essentially and markers to tell you what season we're in. I think it's more inform information. Uh, it's cultural information. It's... um. It's information passed down through culture. You go, oh, we do. What are we doing? Oh, we're doing Easter. Why are we doing Easter? Because um, it's the solstice. <laughs> <laughs> we're going into a new season. So, well, it's not the solstice, right? If you're just going into spring, but um, yeah, I think they're just markers for the year. Actually, we've got our let us own. know when the world's changing because you've got to know yeah. when to plant the crops and when to not plant the crops. And it makes sense because our marker, at least in the Southern Hemisphere, um, mm. is coming up in three days' time. It's the 22nd of – oh, wait, is it the 22nd or is it today? Not sure. So it's just, I think it's – because we should know because we need to do a special dance of some kind, don't we? Some kind of culturally significant 21st of yeah. June. There you go. Couple of days. I'll I'll look into that. Hopefully, I've got to that part. So once your soul's fed, is that it? No, there's no servitude, right? Once once the oh, soul's you cease been eaten, to exist. Yeah, completely. Oh, you and cease that's to exist. That is that's the biggest an... fear. Apparently, that is the biggest fear of the Egyptians is being fed. I can to understand that. Ahmed. He's understand part that. crocodile, part lion, mm. part hippo. Mm-hmm. I know. I know how. I know what Ahmed looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Seen some depictions. Yeah, yeah. Seen seen depictions. Um, but so I'll finish that by the time I see you next week. So I'll tell you how it's going and what what the hell's going on. Tell me more about the forty two things. Yeah, like I will, you I said will. you said it was the Ten Commandments. Yeah, well, I, have to, I don't ones. have it. I don't have it in front of me. All right, so we'll get that for you next week then. 
Which we'll go through a few of the commandments. Give you a full rundown, out, yeah. Figure yeah. out how fucked we are in the afterlife, basically. You know what would be really worrying if someone listened to this and they 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 caught wind of uh, bits and pieces of the Book of the Dead, which is the it's designed to get you through the duat being the underworld, which is full of serpents and monsters, and you've got all the the spells and things you need to mm. survive. Yep, yep. Protective charms and stuff. You need all that stuff. You imagine it's if like you're a, in a it's car like going accident. Into the dungeons. Yeah, yeah. You're in a car accident, right? And your body, your your soul leaves your body. Mm. And you're looking down on it and you, you, you transport it or something, I don't know how it works, into the underworld. And yep, you realize. Yep, yep. You don't have any charms. You don't have any. Say, you don't got you don't, all you've got is a faint memory of what I was talking about. <laughs> You'd be terrified. <laughs> I'd be like, serpents, shit, shit, shit. You'd be oh like, boy, fuck, oh boy, there's oh boy, this, oh boy, there's oh this oh hippo thing, hippo crocodile. Do I have to deny him? Do I have to deny him or not? Do I say yes or no? Do I want to? Do I want to cease to exist? Am I okay with that? The panic would set in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, I am fascinated by an ancient culture even dealing with the concept of not existing anymore as a potential outcome. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's all about you die, heaven, hell, whatever, right? You get to go to your place after you're dead, right? The concept Mm. of, well, it's eternal gardening or nothing, that's interesting, It's quite a complex thing to think about not existing. It doesn't sound that complex, but it is, it is interesting that they fear that so much because they do also have part of the duet where you. It, it, I think it represents hell, where they mm. have spells where you tell them, um, "I don't want to eat shit. Oh, uh, I don't want to let my head hang low. Oh, I don't know why you're worried about that." And um, sounds like a Blink One Eight Two song. <laughs> I reckon AI could make one happen. I reckon if you just found some music AI generator and said, "Give me a, give me two ten songs about the Book of the Dead," uh, use Blink One Eight Two yeah. Yeah, as your reference. <laughs> give me like a live version, a sort of Mark, Tom, and Travis show type feel to it. Mm, excellent. Oh, I'm excited for you, man. That should be a great trip. Um, you're going to see some shit. It's very yeah. exciting. And there's there's one potentially big thing coming up on the 28th of June, a milestone event. Mm, Arguably, some would say it, it it could be as significant as the Magna Carta. Oh, it's it's called the Astra Carta. Oh, it's a new one. Got a new Carta. Yeah, a new one to protect the moon. It's a collab between King Charles the Third oh, and okay. Chris Hadfield. Chris Metallica. Hadfield. I thought you might think that. Yeah, That's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is he? He's Hetfield, right? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, I, I know. I, I thinking the same thing when I Isn't read it. Isn't it James? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I had the exact same thinking. As James you. Hetfield. What did we? What did you say? Chris Hadfield. Chris Hadfield. <laughs> he's yeah, a space guy. Yeah, yeah. Is, the, is he the star man, spaceman? Yeah, he's the space oddity. He's, he's famous for seeing space oddity yes, yes, yes. in orbit. In, in the ISS, yeah. Yes, okay, in the ISS, great. 2012. So he's teamed up with what, KC3? KC3. To do what? Designing a new Astra Carta to protect the moon. It's a bit of a head, moon head nod to the Magna us? Carta. Yeah, environmental damage and, and other things, right. basic rights. So the Magna Carta set out, uh, you know, things it was in 2015 and it underpins Western democracies, right to fair trials, fundamental human rights, all those important things. Yes, important things. Absolute pillar of, of society. Of Western of modern civilization, society. modern yeah, society. Yeah. Mm. So there's not a lot of pillars at the moment in space. And apparently KC3 is well known for his environmental concerns. Is he? Mm. So he's turned his <laughs> concern into space. Yeah, very concerned, very concerned. With the increased space activities, obviously there's an increased cost on the environment. So essentially, it's a space sustainability plan. It's getting released on the 28th of June. And it's supposed to answer some important questions like, you know, who gets to mine? Who owns it? Whose laws? <laughs> Who's deciding this shit? KC3, mate. No, he can't decide KC3 that. KC3 has, he ha- he's extending moon. his jurisdiction. <laughs> right. 
The colonialism's back. Yeah, it's We're back. taking the moon. <laughs> I mean, we already have what some are, what is a, some What trees. does a moon colony look like to you? Does it look like it's a bubble. America has a settlement it's a here? Bubble. China has a thing here. Russia has a thing here. Is that what it looks like to you? I reckon it's uh, what it will become is more of a party bus. I think is you'll have like a, a moon a moon lander unit thing on wheels, right? You just start cruising around, picking people up. Tunes are blaring. Um, what do you mean there's picking low, people up from people who live just, there? Yeah, just you, you drive around blockies. You pick people up. I think it'll just become a big party. Right. Yeah, a bit of a Venga bus type situation, but on the moon. Yeah, but what do you really think? No, and so what was the question? What does the future of the moon sort of bases look like? Are we going to have an American base and down the road there'll be a Chinese base and down the road from that there'll be a Russian base and down the road from that will be a UK base and all that sort of rubbish? Yeah, a few will get together with each other, but I think essentially that's what's going to happen. They're all going to be right. close together as well because they're, mm. as we know, the south pole of the moon is the desirable location. For both. For, from a resources point of view and a and – a, Habitation. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. You'd think we'd all we'd be wanting to get along by then. We need the alien invasion now to get us our Independence Day moment so that we all get on the same team. Uh, f- forget the pettiness and um, go and, go and um, be spacefaring. Humans like Star Trek, right? Is that, is that what we're looking at? Yeah. Find the aliens. Be friendly with the aliens. Survive. Live. Well, no, the Independence Day sort of requires the aliens to be hostile so that we can team up. Mm. Maybe a little bit less hostility. Just a little Independence bit. Independence Day? Yeah, just maybe the threat of you hostility. Know, they, you know, maybe a bit too far? Yeah, they started blowing up the White House. New York City, yeah. Yeah, that was quite a moment. Hey, is there an Independence Day too? Yeah, there is. Have you seen it? No. Nah. Apparently it's really bad. Oh, no. I loved mm. Independence Day. I remember when I walked out of that movie, I was probably about 14. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying the words, there will never be a better movie than that. Yeah, it hit that hard, huh? I was the perfect age. Yeah. Perfect. And it the, was a badass movie from a special effects sick. point of view. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute wild special effects. I didn't know they had they could do that. Mm. I, I remember the, my, the, one of the better movies I remember before that was Twister. I don't think Twister holds a candle to Independence Day. No, it doesn't. There's some real cool moments in Independence Day with the spaceships. I think the spaceship design was great. The force fields. I thought the, the look of the force fields. Amazing. I thought they were scary as fuck. Um, yes. That really yes. I thought job. they were very scary. The telepathy element really had me worried. Uh, well, the when, fact that they're just little dudes, but when they put their suits on, they you know like a suit of armor, they have they're very scary when they're in their full suit. Kind of like how in Stargate they wear those metal helmets that they can turn on and off. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a biological version of the mech suits, right? You know mm. how the, we have all these movies where you have the big, the big bionic yeah, I mean, exoskeleton. We don't need any movies anymore. We're going to have them. We're going to have them. The aliens we've got them. No, we've got them. We've got what? The mech suits. We're making mech, mech suits. suits. Yeah, we got mech suits. We're yeah, doing we mech do. suits do. already. Actually, speaking of that, Michio Kaku was talking about how a man paralyzed from the neck down, a quadriplegic. I heard about this. Kicked off the, the not the World robot Cup. Robot legs. Something. Yeah, robot legs. Did the first kick of the soccer comp or whatever. And I actually wanted to watch that, but I didn't get around to it. He's using his brain? He's using his brains. And it's it's bypassed. Robot legs. Robot legs. Somehow they've hooked it up so he, it, it doesn't use... His nervous system, his somehow his like legs are plugged into his brain, but like bypassing his nervous system. It doesn't have to be your legs plugged into your brain. I mean, if your brain is connected to your phone, yeah, and yeah. your phone is connected to your legs, now we're talking. Mm. Uh, brain to legs, fine. They could probably do that. Brain to phone, they can do that. Le- phone to legs, they can do that. So whatever, however way they did it, it's pretty cool, man. So it was the World Cup 2014. What? What? It's a first kick made by Paralyzed Man with the help of mind control robot. It's on YouTube. 
A paralyzed man has made the first kick of the World Cup using mind controlled robotic exoskeleton. In 2014. So what are we doing now? <laughs> that was yeah. that was that was ten years ago. <laughs> You think we'd be well on the way to um, whatever the next phase is, maybe like a Pacific Rim situation where you have two minds, two people in the brain of the larger robot? I thought Pacific Rim looked sick, actually. Yeah, it does look good, but it's a bit, it's a bit of a trash movie. Oh, yeah, but, you know. If you're in it for the you just want to see some cool shit, then I guess you're in the right place. Look, the kick was underwhelming. Um, I, I've just seen it. Like it wasn't a bend it like Beckham situation. Oh, no. Nor, I wasn't expecting it to be. I'm just saying. No. Oh, man. I love it. It's, actually, they weren't quadriplegic because they, they did a fist pump at the end. <laughs> the yeah, kick paralyzed set. man. Paralyzed I think man. Legs down, yeah. That's excellent. Look at the excitement. Oh, I'm sure he loved it. Oh, yeah. It's an achievement. That's like walking on the moon, but. Hmm. If you get Probably bored, harder. Unchained, the Tour de France documentary. Maybe, yep. maybe one for next week. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and we will be back next week. Hit us up on the email. Back to perspective at mail.com. That is the email. Tour de France starts 1 July as well, so we probably have oh to God. talk about bicycles a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it all. See you next time.